Hi students, welcome to the Chem 300 series and the topic of properties and structures of matter. This is video number 18 where we're looking at some of the trends that we can notice in the periodic table that relate to electron configuration. Now we have previously looked at some of the trends in a previous video, but now I want to try and see if we can start to see some similarities just by examining electron configuration. Now we've been spending a little bit of time looking at the Bohr uh, comparison between the Bohr model and the Schrodinger model in terms of um, where the electrons are located around the nucleus of an atom. So for lithium, the Bohr model tells us that there are two electrons in the first shell and one in the second. That is the same sort of thing that's going on here. Um, for sodium, we have two in the first, uh, we have eight in the second, and then we have one in the third shell. For potassium, we have two, and then eight, and then eight, and then one. And then for rubidium, again, we have two, eight, 18, eight, and one. One of the things that we notice, and um, hopefully you will already see that from just what's going on in the um, Schrodinger process, is that we have a single electron in the valence shell, a single electron in the outer shell. Now what's more important is that when we look at the Schrodinger model and include the subshells, you can see that this particular electron is sitting in the S orbital. So 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, and just one electron. So one electron in the valence shell. And it's in, an, in the s orbital or subshell. And this is really important because when we start looking at some of the chemical interactions of different elements, it is the location of these electrons and also their relationship to a stable or more stable nuclei that tells us something about whether or not the uh, particular element is going to react and with what it will react. So here's a nice little trend that you can see happening that is a chemical explanation for why the group one metals uh, react similarly or at least have some similarities in their chemical properties. These are called the alkali metals and, uh, and they're very reactive and in fact they become more reactive as we go down this particular group. What's I guess most important about this is the fact that we have um, electrons getting further and further away from the nucleus and therefore the uh, attractive force between the nucleus and those electrons is getting weaker and weaker and so um, they get uh, particularly reactive down towards the bottom of this group. Now perhaps you might want to have a look at the um, halogens, the group seven elements. Um, again, we could do the same sort of an exercise that we did uh, with our group one metals. Uh, for fluorine, which is element number nine, we would have a 1s2, a 2s2, and a 2p5. When we go down this list, what we're going to find is that the chlorine at the end is going to be 3s2 and 3p5. For bromine, it's going to be 4s2 and 4p5. And for iodine, 5s2 and 5s5. This is one of the interesting things that we see in terms of these patterns. What's, again, an important explanation is that when we look through these trends, we see that um, if we compare these to the Bohr model, now we're looking at a total of seven electrons in the outer shell. Once again, this is a common property of all of the halogens, the same number of valence electrons in, uh, the same number of electrons in the valence shell. And of course, um, this is going to help explain some of the chemical properties of the halogens. Once again, um, there is an increasing distance from the nucleus with each of these subsequent shells. 
And so we see interesting things in terms of the properties. Of course, this time they become more reactive uh, towards the top because most of these are going to react by taking in an electron and therefore are more likely to be attracted if they are closer to the nucleus. The whole um, understanding of electron configuration is very important for looking at chemical reactions and obviously this is something that we're going to be looking at not only in class but also later on in the video series. Thanks for watching.